Joining us now is a uh, woman who um, has blonde hair. Uh, you can't see her right now, but she does have blonde hair. Uh, the book is The New Rules for Blondes, Highlights from a Fair-Haired Life. And we welcome in uh, blonde and comedian Selena uh, Kopik. And here's, here's the book. Hey, Selena, how are you? Hi, Steve. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. By the way, you were in Brooklyn, uh, it says here, like a couple of days ago. I I'd spent, uh, except for the last 13 years, my whole life in Brooklyn. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's where I live. I love Brooklyn. Oh, you are you are in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Because I was going to guess Massachusetts because I see you're headed uh, you're headed to uh, Cambridge and uh, and Wellesley uh, as well. Yes, yeah, I'm all over the place. I grew up in Mass, and I am a proud Mass hole, as they say. Um, but yeah, I live in Brooklyn now. I've been in New I've been living in you know Man or in the New York area for a bit, little over six years now. Oh, okay, good for you. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah, I, I, I have Bay Ridge and uh, Bensonhurst nice. and all that. But you're probably you're probably in tr trendy Cobble Hill and uh, that kind of place, right? <laughs> I'm in Windsor Terrace, which uh, I think may give me some cred, but I know it's not the coolest in All right, so you you, you write a book. <laughs> Um, you know, new rules for blondes. And uh, is there, let me ask you this first of all, is there really, um, I guess there must be, like there is for anybody and everybody has it within them. Is there a preconceived notion, I'm looking at a picture of you right now, is there a preconceived notion uh, that, that most people have of blondes because, especially you know, women, because they are blonde? I, oh yeah, I definitely think that that is still at play. Um, and yeah, I know for me, uh, people tend to assume that I'm not very bright. Uh, people are often surprised when I throw out million dollar vocab words occasionally. I've been known give, to give me a give me a million dollar vocab word. Oh, a million dollar vocab word. Um, I, I mean, maybe this maybe this makes me sound not that bright, but I feel like myriad is a pretty good <laughs> word to throw out there. You know, <laughs> uh, among, that, among a myriad of words that you could choose I, from. Exactly, yes. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's going to throw that in there occasionally. Okay, well, that's good. But anyway, so you do think that people do have a preconceived uh, notion of uh, this girl's not as bright because she's a blonde? I definitely think they do. But I do think that that is changing currently um, because, you know, I mean, it just seems like we're in a moment right now where there are just blondes out there just killing it and doing great things. I mean, Hillary Clinton, like beautiful blonde, Secretary of State. Was is, is Hillary Clinton actually, she's a blonde? Um. I mean, she, I think, is a lot like my mom, where, you know, as she gets older, it's graying, and then it's easier to go blonde instead of going gray, kind of. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, okay, because she, so she, because, I mean, all her years in the White House with Clinton, I mean, I never remember Hillary Clinton being a blonde. So you're, te you're saying the, maybe the gray is the senior blonde? Is that what you're saying? I think so. And I know that I'm pretty generous in my definition of blondness. I mean, even people with just blonde highlights, I'm like, oh, welcome to the club. You know, everybody's welcome. I welcome them with open arms. All right. So, yeah, so, so what, do you, what advice do you have for women? How do, how do you, besides, you know, shooting off your million-dollar vocabulary, what other ways do you have to disarm people, uh, uh, you know, and taking away the uh, preconceived stereotypes? I think uh, one good thing I talk about in the book is um, being – I think it's really important to be a classy blonde. I think – Sometimes, you know, not only do people expect blondes to be stupid, but I think they expect us to be maybe a little bit uncouth and clueless. So I have a chapter in here um, that is all tips that I learned from my blonde mentor, who is my mother. Um, and it's about how to be a classy blonde and, you know, just, just sort of tips on how to conduct yourself at a um, dinner party, how to bring hostess gifts, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, the book is sort of a fun mix of stuff like that, like informational chapters, and then some just ridiculous stories from my own life. <laughs> All right, so so tell us the um, the least classy thing that you ever did uh, as a as a blonde. The least classy thing that I ever did as a blonde. Something your mother, if she doesn't, if she knows about it, she's you've heard about it over and over, and if she doesn't know about it and she's listening, you're good to hear about it. Um, oh, you know what I did that is not very classy and is not in the book and is not something I'm hugely proud of. And does your mother um, know, though? Does she know? She does know about this one, but she likes to, uh, I think, Forget it. Yes, it. she puts it out. She Okay, go ahead. What is it? I can't wait to hear. This was years ago. I used to live in Chicago my first year out of college, and um, I someone spilled their beer all over me at a bar, and I don't do that because I really like my hair. I have phenomenal hair, award-winning. Um, so I, rather than sort of, you know, seeing what happened, just as soon as I felt wet on my hair, 
I spun around, had a full pint in my hand, and threw it on the – it was a couple. Um, and we got into a little bit of a tussle at the bar. Not the classiest thing in the world. So, wait, wait, they spilled the beer on your hair? So, I mean, were they above you, or they threw it there on purpose, or, or were no, they giants they, and spilled it down? How did they get on your hair? They were extremely drunk, and the girl – it was a couple, and the girl was going to hug the guy, and she somehow oh, managed okay. to, like, put her arm around the back of his head and splash it on my head. And, uh, and you know, I just wasn't, you know, I was like, I'm not going to play nice tonight. Nah, nah, nah. Um, so I spilled, th- like, threw an entire uh, pint of beer on this couple. And then we got into a little bit of a screaming match. Uh, and then I was picked up by some bouncers and literally thrown out of the bar. <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking to Selena uh, Kopic, and she is uh, blonde and a comedian and the author, or comedian, I guess, if I want to be proper, <laughs> and the, uh, the uh, author of The New Rules for Blondes here on the Steve Malsberg Show. All right, so, uh, you know, do, do you... You, as when you were growing up and uh, as a blonde, do you because of your hair? Do you have uh, as a as a blonde woman like blonde? I know you said Hillary and all that, but blonde role models. Do you look to people in the news who are blonde? Do you have like hair identification or or you know as a woman growing up? Do you just you know have the same kind of heroes and 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 people that you look up to? And hair doesn't matter. I'm just asking this because it's probably a dumb. Uh, a dumb graying man question to ask a blonde, but it it seems a little uh, appropriate here. Oh no, I totally did. I mean, I grew up like living by the TV show Baywatch, uh, and they <laughs> had some great blonde hair on that show. Although it did, I felt like Baywatch taught me such crazy lessons in childhood. And don't even get me started on the breast implants, but. What threw me off about Baywatch is I loved the blonde hair on, like, Pamela Anderson and Nicole Eggert. Um, but those women had platinum blonde hair and could tan. And that blew my mind because I'm a natural blonde, and a lot of natural blondes, we can't tan. We're just sort of pasty people in, in general, you know? Well, that, that, so, that's where the fair-haired uh, life part of the uh, title page would come in, I guess. Ding, ding, ding. You are correct, Steve. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I used to really like Pam Anderson and Nicole Eggert, and I also grew up on Singled Out, and Jenny McCarthy is a blonde icon. And, I mean, to this day, she looks phenomenal, and her hair is delightful. All right, so so as a as a successful woman in, in, in business and as a comedian and all that kind of stuff and an accomplished author, um, do you – I mean, what, what, what do you see the role of women – you've watched it change from your mom to you, and, and I've watched it change from when I was growing up, which was probably a little before you, to, to, to my mom and, and where things are now. Do you think that um, – that all these strides women have made and the, the, the are, are helpful to them to society. Do you feel that women are are made to feel guilty, as some guests that I've had on have said that if they don't have a career, if they don't uh, try to fend for themselves, if they quote unquote rely on a man, they failed? Or do you think uh, that's uh, that's hogwash? You know, I think that's a really good. It's such an interesting debate, and I know I took a lot of women's studies classes in college, and. We would talk about that a lot of sort of, you oh, know. I, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> if you took women's studies classes in, in college, I bet, and I could bet, I bet I know how the conversation went, but go ahead. Oh, I know. I mean, but, you know, I got to say, and, and I, I think I have, I think about it a lot because especially in stand-up, um, you know, I mean, women are a huge minority and, and stand-up is a really, you know, unique circumstance. Um, and, I mean, to be a female stand-up, you have to be a feminist, effectively. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I can't decide one way or another completely because I feel like I think that women should be allowed to do whatever they want to do. And if that is have a career, great. If that's having kids, great. If that's trying to juggle both, great. It, you know, I'll be honest, it seems like it's really tough to juggle both. Um, and and I think that's sort of heartbreaking. No, really, because- Selena. Selena, all you got to do is really have the baby, and uh, stay home for a couple of weeks, and then leave it with a nanny if you could afford it, and go have your career, and uh, and uh, come home and vi- you know what really threw me the the CEO of um, uh, who was Google? she. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Is it Google? No. Or or which is the other option you gave me? I forget, but you know who wrote the book. Yeah, she's a billionaire, and her husband is, you know, but between them, they're billionaires. And uh, they make it a point, don't you know? And she said in her 60 Minutes interview to have at least one of the parents, one of them, home most of the time with the kids for dinner. Now, here are two people who never have to work again the rest of their lives, but they're they're patting themselves on the back that they make sure that one of them is home most of the time for dinner with their young kids. I I just don't get that. I I mean, 
every family runs differently, but I know for me, you know, I grew up, we had dinner as a family every single night. And, yeah, and both my parents made it their business to have dinner. Me and my, both my sisters, the five of us sat down for dinner. Wait a minute, are your sisters blonde? No. Uh -oh. I, uh -oh. I grew up feeling like an alien child with my perfect <laughs> hair. Um, so I have two I have two brunette sisters and actually um you may be familiar with my middle sister. She is um in all the Toyota commercials right now. She's uh Jan from Toyota. I don't know if you've seen that commercial. Which Toyota one? Commercial. Jan Jan from Toyota. Uh, uh, I'll check it out. Is that a national campaign or is that local? Yes. It is a national campaign. Okay, yeah. I'll check. Um, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye out for it. One other question for you, uh, Selena, before we wrap up: um, Who was your comedic influences uh, growing up, or now well, even? I don't know. Yeah, um, you know, I grew up just addicted to Saturday Night Live, um, and I loved, you know, the era of um, Julia Sweeney, Jan Hooks, Nora Dunn, uh, but then also into like Phil Hartman, Chris Farley. Um, Ellen Cleghorn was a huge, I adored her. Uh, and in stand-up, I mean, Maria Bamford is a huge inspiration of mine. Um, I just, so many of the gals, Aisha Tyler, I think it's just delightful. Um, there's just so much great stand-up out there right now, and it's a really exciting time because it's very accessible. You know, I mean, with the proliferation of different cable channels and different ways of releasing content, it's so neat because you can get your hands on stuff in, in just such new and unique ways. See, so, uh, I, see you talk about generational gaps um, uh, my, my, you know, my favorites on Saturday Night Live, of course, was the original cast, uh, Gilda Radner, who I, I also saw her, her yeah. one-woman show on Broadway, Lorraine Newman, Jane Curtin. Uh, to me, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the other people you mentioned certainly are talented in and of their own right, but uh, there was something about that original cast with Bellucci and Aykroyd and Bill Murray and oh, all yeah. that. They're just, just amazing. Oh, I know. That was really amazing. I mean, that five-year run, it's, it's a really interesting history um, of, you know, I mean, I like how it was five years of SNL from 75 to 80, and then, you know, completely changing of the guard. Right. Piscopo, yeah, Murphy, he's... then that group came in and all that kind of stuff. Hey, listen, it's been interesting talking to you. And uh, so I'll, if I'm ever in Brooklyn and I see a blonde, I'll go up to her and say, uh, hello, Selena, because it'll have to be you. Yeah. Chances are it's going to be me. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Just say hi. Without a doubt. All right, Selena, thank you very much. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Selena Kopik, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the new rules for blondes.